What's going on guys? Drunk Italian here. NHL 17 has finally arrived, boys. We're back! <laughs> Just checking if I broke the couch. We're all good. Let's get to it, boys. So this series is all about celebrating the World Cup of Hockey. I'm going to control three teams. And those teams that I've chosen are Canada, United States of America, and Sweden, all right? These are three of the biggest powerhouses in the hockey universe today. So I'm gonna be building a team around each country and playing 20 games with each team. Each episode will consist of three games where I play one per team, and the winner of the series will be the team who has the most points after those 20 games. So let me show you the teams that we're gonna start off with. So each team will start with a base card team with only common cards, all right? So no rares, all the players are 84 overall or lower. As you can see, this is Team Canada where I've started it. It's pretty random, I haven't really gone for any synergies, it's just the cards I got in my starter pack and then random cards, the cheapest ones I could find that I uh, bought off the market to build this starting team. And I did that for each country. So Canada's team looks a little something like this. We got Chris Kunitz on left wing with Ryan Nugent Hopkins and Anthony Duclair. So um, kind of a mix of young and old. Um, Nugent Hopkins a playmaker, all 84 overall, so not bad. Then we got Matt Martin, Riley Nash and Logan Shaw. Nick Ritchie, Cedric Paquette and Alexander Grenier, a grinding power forward third line. And then we got Cody McLeod, Nick Paul, and JC Lippon. On defense core, you've got Nathan Beaulieu, Jared Spurgeon, Eric Goodbranson, the new Vancouver Canuck, with Derek Pouliot, Chris Pronger, somehow still in this game, with um, his Arizona teammate, Michael Stone. And in net, we've got Chad Johnson, who is apparently the drunk Italians look like. I don't really see it. And Carter Hutton. The synergies we were running for Canada at the start, ooh, it, there's not really much there. We've got a couple passing playmaker, Wicked Rister. We've got Nephron Presence and Relentless Forecheck activated. Uh, we've actually got one too many on Nephron Presence, but it looks like this team is going to be a crash the net, relentless forecheck cycle game kind of team. So we'll try and capitalize on that when we play with Canada. Um, heavy hitters, they're close. Um, team shot rocking, they're close. We've got the coach there, Michael Davidson. We're one point away from that. And there's a, it's a trap there. Both goalies have that synergy. All right, moving on to Team USA. We're starting off with Patty Maroon, the big boy on the left wing, with Brian Rust, the uh, playoff performer last year, with the veteran Brian Gianta. Then we got Matt Nieto, the It's NHL lookalike, Jordan Schrader with Trevor Lewis. We've got Nate Thompson, Chris Vandeveld, and Tommy Wingles. Mike McCarron, Tim Schaller, and Connor Sheary. On defense, Brooks Orprick. What did I just say? Brooks Orprick. Okay. Adam Clendenning, Kevin Miller, Jake McCabe, Anthony Botetto, and Greg Patteron. And now we've got Jeff Zakoff and Al Montoya backing him up. The synergies, uh, again, pretty random, but we've got Relentless Forecheck activated and we've got It's a Trap activated. So this team's gonna be heavy on the forecheck and just as heavy on the back check, um, trapping it up in the neutral zone here. And finally, we've got Team Sweden. Matthias Janmark with Willy Nee and Johan Franzen. So again, a contrast of young and old there on the first line. Jacob De La Rose, Melker Carlson, and Andre Burakovsky. Johan Larsson, Marcus Kruger, and Kali Yarncroc. And then Jesper Faust, William Carlson and Magnus Pajari. No, Sweden will not start off with Eric Carlson, but that's the goal to get there. On defense, as you can see, no Eric Carlson, but there's Toby Enstrom and Carl Gunnarsson, Peter Petter Gramberg, Johnny Oduya, Patrick Nemeth, and Victor Louv. And backstopping the net will be Anders Nilsson from Buffalo and Jonas the Monster Gustafsson from Edmonton. So looking at the synergies for Sweden, obviously they've got a little bit more skill, so they got more of the offensive synergies uh, getting started here. Dirty Dangler, one. Passing Playmaker, one. Relentless Forecheck, again, that seems to be a popular synergy with team shot blocking. So um, all three teams are more defensively minded and they're heavy on the forecheck, but I'm hoping to see the teams evolve as the series progresses and each team 
drafts up better and better players. So you guys might be wondering, how is this series going to work really? How are teams going to get better? And well, if you look to the rules on your right, my left here, um, you can see the following. The objective is for the team to get the most points after 20 games played. Each team earns a certain amount of points based on the result of each game that they play. So the awards for each team's performance after each game are as follows. 100 points for a win, an extra 100 points for a rage quit, an extra 200 points for a shutout, because they're actually pretty hard to get in NHL 17, I've noticed. And if I win by more than three goals, that's an extra 300 points. And with those points, a team may be eligible to upgrade their team once per episode. And the upgrade process will be done through a makeshift draft on the auction house. So the draft cost breakdowns are as follows. For a common card, so non-rare, just a common card, is 100 points. A rare card, 85 overall or more, will be 300 points. And when more special cards come out over the next few weeks, each special card will cost a team 600 points. All right guys, so I hope I explained the rules of the series clear enough. If you guys have any questions whatsoever about the series, need any clarification, or, or have any suggestions about how to improve the rules of the series, please feel free to let me know in the comments section down below. So now that you guys are all caught up in the new series, you know all the rules, let's start game number one of the World Cup of Hot 2016 in NHL 17 with the host country, Team Canada, baby. All right, boys, so the first game of the World Cup of Hut. Just to note, I obviously want this to be a live com with a face cam, but I fucked up the audio, so we're stuck with this for this episode, but all future episodes will be live comms with face cams. Don't worry about that. And just to start off this first game, and Team Canada gets on the board with a nice little cross ice pass. Midway through the first, and the boys are up one to nothing. Good start. Then we, uh, we're going on the breakout here. Try to lay a huge hit at the blue line. Turns the puck over, and we're in. Tries to take a shot. Doesn't work, but he gets it back and snips it short side, and the boys are up two to nothing. It's looking good for Team Canada so far. Now, boys, just creeping in the zone. Through the legs, Deke gets around the defense. Who's poke check spamming. Draws a penalty shot. Should be a penalty shot. The ref gives it there. He gives a signal. Now what's number 13 going to do? He's going to shield the puck, hold it forehand, and the goalie gets a piece of it. He was down and out, but Chad Johnson stretches out at the last second, gets a piece of it. The boys are freaking dominating. 15 shots to nothing. Four minutes on attack to 40 seconds. Passing's looking good. One power play goal. Let's hope that continues in the second. So here we go. Second period. We're cycling it. That's how could the Canadians play. They like to cycle a quick puck movement along the boards. Duclair comes out with it, circles around, gets by one defender, throws it across, and the veteran Chris Kunitz, one of the top players on the team as of now, scores. He's sitting back door and he puts that puck in and the Canadians are up three to nothing. So things are looking good. Midway almost done the second period and long stretch pass. Our player gets through here, throws it across, misses the open net with a chance to get that four goal lead and a shot at an extra 300 points. Couldn't get it done, but we still got one period to go. We're out shooting him 21 to four now. Time and attack is same trend. It's heavily in our favor. So let's take this first game. Let's wrap it up. Hopefully get a full point load for Team Canada to start off the World Cup of Hut. In the third period, wins the draw, throws it across, gets bodied at the blue line. He's trapping it up there. He's uh, playing good defense, but we go through the legs, a toe drag, and then we snipe it with one minute to go uh, into the first period. Chris, uh, what am I saying? <laughs> one minute into the third period, Chris Kunitz makes the Philadelphia defense look absolutely silly as Ryan Nugent Hopkins win the draw, and then Kunitz does the rest. Through the legs, then toe drag, then snipes it back, backhand to forehand. And the Canadians are up 4 0, and they're looking good for those extra 300 points. Now we get again another through the legs goal backhand. Should be a goal, not a goal. Ta uh, Chad Johnson, the TDI lookalike, gets a gets a bad, gets a uh, what the fuck is the equipment name? The uh, glove on it. Then he goes the other way and squeaks a weak one by my Chad Johnson. That one definitely should not have gone in. And now the Canadians have lost that three goal plus lead. 
and lost those 300 points so far. A nice goal by Benoit Pouliot. Just gets the shot through. We were, we were putting the pressure on him, just couldn't get to him in time, and he sweeps it under the arm of Chad Johnson to make it a three-goal game. Now we're breaking into the third to the zone. Goes backhand. Oh my God, what a beautiful goal. What great rush play by the Canadians. He breaks across the zone. Right winger goes hard to the net, cuts across the goalie with the power move, and he retains the uh, four goal lead. Now, Canadians throwing it back. Oh my God, it's a 6 1 game now. It's backdoor. Riley Nash sitting there all day. That's our second backdoor goal. The Canadians put in a great effort, and they take their first game by a score of 6 to 1. Canadians are happy about it, and that will give them a nice number of points. Unfortunately, they don't get the shutout. So you don't get those extra 200 points, nor was there a rage quit. So that is a clean 400 points for the Canadians. Kunitz, Nugent Hopkins, Bolio were the three stars in that game. So now that Canada's done their first game, let's see what the Super Swedes can do. Back in game number two of the first episode of the World Cup of Hut, we are Sweden now taking on a Canucks fan and uh, we're trying to get the skill of the Swedes going in this game. The Canadians had the grit, had the forecheck. Let's see what the Swedes can do with their European style of play here. Nylander breaking in already, throws it across and a great chance right off the bat for the Swedes. Now a long stretch pass right up the middle of the ice. He's stick handling, he's showing his skill. He gets a nice little shot. And uh, here we go again, off the rush, a toe drag wide. Tries to snipe it, but no good. The goalie stands tall and keeps it an even game, but he walks right out front off the post. I think that was two posts, that, that sequence there. Now we go cut across, oh my God, through the legs, back to the forehand, but the goalie's up to the task once again. Then here's Johan Larsson, look at him hold on the back and the power move puts it right across into the empty net across the goalie and this guy's apparently had enough. And that's a rage quit, my friends. So that is a one goal win, a shutout, a rage quit. Um, and that is another 400 points for the Super Swedes. So the Swedes make quick work of that game. And now let's see what the US and the Americans can do in the last game of the epi first episode of the World Cup of Hot. So here we go. We're here with the uh, United States team against the Detroit Red Wings. Do it for Harambe. He wants to win for the gorilla may he rest in peace um but the united states won't go out won't go out without a fight although matt nieto gets absolutely bodied there but he draws a penalty let's see if the americans can play better than they did in the world cup of hockey uh this year so that was an embarrassment they uh their four check forces a long five on three he just uh, put the puck over the boards there, delay a game penalty. Now we're gonna come in, we're gonna drop pass it. We're gonna cut right to the slot and we're gonna shoot it. Doesn't, doesn't work, but it pops right in the slot and we get another rebound chance. Now the USA is working it again. Puts it across, chances there, rebounds there. Miller's got it. Now we throw it across, stretch pass. He's on the rush. He, he dives across to block the pass, but we miss the chance. Then the US right into the slot again, a quick shot. No rebound by the goalie. And we block that shot. We turn it over in the offensive zone. Uncharacteristic. And then he hits the post. Quick action here in the first period of this game. And that was a hectic first period. A lot of chances. But the U.S. couldn't solve the opponent's goaltender. Even though they're heavily outshot, out shooting them. 10-2 to two are the shots. Uh, double time on attack. Americans are looking strong in this last game of the episode. So let's see if they can pull out a win in the rest of this game. Now low shot rebound, Brian Gianta pounces on that rebound and the boys take a one nothing lead. They finally break through the opponent's defense here and they are up one to nothing. The fans are loving it. Brian Gianta goes hard to the net, gritty line. Brian Russ just gets a low shot on the right pad. It's a juicy rebound for Brian Gianta and he's gonna bury that all day. as typical American hockey. Grit, go to the net. Get some rebounds, some greasy goals. Uh, meanwhile, on the rush here, tries to throw it across. Then he's back door, and the goalie has no idea what just happened. We beat him out for the puck uh, in a battle behind the net. Threw it out in front, and our player was uh, sneaking away back door with no coverage. That's about it that happened in the second period. The Americans go to the dressing room with a healthy two-goal lead. Let's see if they can snap up another two goals here. Retain the shutout maybe cause a rage quit and get a full point 
full point load, 700 points in the last game of the episode. Back for the third period now. The opponent gets wide, he gets in on a rush, but uh, who's the goalie? Jeff Zakoff, I think, makes the save, and then a stretch pass the other way, and we're gone, and we go backhand, forehand, make the goalie look silly on the breakaway, and we bury it. I think that was Trevor Lewis. And now the Americans have a three goal lead, cut across slapper, across the green, and Chris Vandeveld's there for the rebound. That's two quick goals in the third period. Gets them up four to nothing, and they're on track for a full point load. Now the Americans gotta forge that rage quit. Um, it's looking good, the Americans are dominant this game. They're strong on the four check, forces an icing on the power play. It's going the other way now, and let's see, oh, we won't even get to see what happens because the Americans have done it. They forced a rage quit. A 4-0 rage quit shutout win means the Americans come away with a full 700 points after their game. And they come out on top in this episode of the World Cup of Hut. So after each team's dominant performance in this first episode, let's break down the points and see how much each team has in their bank. Canada has 400 points after that 6-1 win. Sweden also has 400 points after their 1-0 rage quit win. And USA has a very nice 700 points after a 4-0 shutout rage quit win. So guys, what I want you to do in the comments section down below is to, you know, think about the gameplay, analyze it, and let me know what kind of player each team needs. I'll be looking at the feedback before I record next episode and your guys feedback will be used to determine who I draft for each team in order to upgrade them at the beginning of next episode. And so how I'm going to do the draft is similar to what I did in my NHL 16 makeshift hut drafts where I would go in the auction house and uh, specify my filters by position. Instead, what I'm going to do here is we're going to specify by rarity, level, country, and if applicable, collection type for special cards. All right, guys, so let me know your ideas for what each team needs to upgrade to succeed in uh, the coming divisions. We're about to be promoted to um, Division 9 after we get one more win. So USA is going to play the first game of next episode because they got the most points in this episode, which gives them an advantage of competing in Division 10 before we get promoted to Division 9 against harder opponents. So that's the benefit of getting the most points in each episode. Guys, let me know any feedback you have for this series. I'm having so much fun making it. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying watching it. It's something new, it's something different. Hopefully you guys noticed the production quality of this video. Big shout out to KPA Design on Twitter. Um, he designed all these graphics that you see right now. He did an amazing, incredible job. I, gotta, I can't thank him enough um, for the work he's done for my channel. Anyways guys, thanks for watching the first episode of the World Cup of Hut. Again, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. If you're new here and you like what you see, maybe subscribe and you can see more of it. I don't know. It's up to you. Um, but thanks for guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.